the nation state that we deal with here, you know, uh, they call it America. I'm holding up air quotes for those of you listening at home. They call it America, but I, I refer to it as the American empire. And why? Because it is behaving as empires have in the past. Now, when you bring That's up right. this idea of, uh, of, of gangsterism, really, uh, when it comes to these behaviors, it is a, a salient point to make. Why? Because even in the underworld, the alleged underworld, uh, this is exactly the behavior that takes place. You consolidate your power. You know, you don't uh, you don't necessarily murder all of the people that are conducting illegal business in a certain area. You turn them over and you make them part of the organization, or at least uh, they're now working for you instead of working for themselves. This is the way it's done. And uh, I, I also believe that Michael Parenti was very accurate. Now, not necessarily in everything he said, but when he coined the phrase the gangster state and he was referring yep. to the behavior of, uh, of, of America, uh, most notably through the assassination squads and death squads and interfering with other people's lands and the way they did it and installing dictators in different places and things like that. That's what he was referring to. Um, I think it's extremely fair to recognize that uh, we do have a gangster state of sorts. Now, oh, well, on some they levels, used to say about yeah. they used to say that about uh, different presidents, like uh, Bush Senior. Mm -hmm. He said that he was gonna he was gonna rid crime, take a crime off the streets of America, and he did just that. He did uh, take the crime, uh, all the criminal element, off the streets of America. He said he was going to do that. And he did. He brought them all into the White House and gave them a job to work for him. Well, the, the Bush crime family's uh, model, effectively, was to do that. And he did take away some of the criminals off the streets, and that would be the criminals that didn't work for him. Uh, right. You know, so that, that's, that's how he chose them. And yeah. uh, it, it seems to be, again, the model, like you said, and like we talked about with the empires. Here's the thing. You notice when Jordan said that the Roman Empire would go through and adapt these different places. You keep your religion. Hey, you can even keep the guy who's in charge. It doesn't matter. Um you, you notice Jordan didn't say, well, you just have to have, uh, you know, a very moral code and get rid of these things that are. Oh, no, no, there, there's no consideration on that. As a matter of fact, so long as their taxes are paid, uh, the That's Roman right. Empire put up with a lot of stuff that, That's exactly you know. right. As long as you pay your taxes and you come in here and when we call you, you come in here and you are and you're respectful. And you get on your knees and you show us that you accept us as your masters, that we will, we will, you know, bring you in and uh, let you do business and we will see to it that you are protected and your business is protected and your country has, uh, gets big grants and big contracts from us and you are our friends. Like Al Capone used to say, any man who wants to be my friend, I want to be his friend. And if you if you want to if you want to be my enemy, they'll, they'll, you're going to find out who, who I really am. You want to be my enemy? Try it, and see what I'm see what how I will react to that. You want to be friends? Good, I'll be your friend. You want to be my enemy? I'll deal with you. Mm -hmm. And so, this is why I say that the way that America is being run today is a criminal element. It's a whole criminal element going on for power. And it was, um, it was said many years ago by, uh, by this German philosopher. I can't remember his name right now. But he said when fascism uh, raises its head in your country, uh, it can be quickly brought under control and eradicated. If the government itself is honest and decent, it can do what it needs to do to protect itself from the fascist element. You, when, when the government begins to see that the criminal element is taking over, the government at that particular moment can move to get rid of that criminal element if it's, if it's honest and decent and it sees what's going on, it can get rid of its enemy and keep it clean and above, and keep it clean and above board. But if it does not do anything to stop the growth of the fascist movement, 
one day the fascism will be so overwhelming the government has no possible way of extricating itself out of the situation. The government will not be able to stand up against the criminal element, period. It will not happen. And it said in that particular German uh, philosopher said, and it will never, ever, if it ever takes hold, fascism ever takes hold in a major government, it will never, ever give up its position of power. It will never give it up. So once fascism is taken over, it's done. It's finished. That's what you got. That's who you are. And this is where we are today in the world we live in today. The most powerful government the face of the earth is the Roman Empire today, <clears throat> which is the U.S., Washington, D.C., and it is purely a criminal, fascist, bloody criminal element on the earth today. And this is why today I believe it's going to be practically impossible to ever clean the human race up again. <clears throat> I think it's pretty much impossible to hope for a better future when the people who are in power today are mentally deranged criminals. They are they are living in a totally different world than you are. <clears throat> they don't see the world the way you see it. They don't live by the same moral codes, ethics, morality, or anything else. They don't have any problem with murdering a women and children. You know, <clears throat> it was just uh, it's just a horrible situation that we are now as Americans in. We are in a mess that we cannot get ourselves out of. The problem is very simply stated. When when you see big time criminal uh, uh, criminality, who do you go to? You go to the law. And you go to the police, you go to the law enforcement to enforce the law and, and show them the criminality that's going on. And they come in with the power of government and clean up the, uh, the, the criminality, put the criminals in jail and make sure everybody knows you don't do that in this country. It don't work. And so you live by the law. But if, in point of fact, it's the law that is corrupt, and the lawyers are corrupt, and the whole system of, of judges is corrupt. The entire system itself is corrupt. Who are you going to go to to clean that up? You're going to go to the courts. The courts are the corruption. Mm. You're going to you're going to take it to the police. The police are corrupted. So if you want to turn to the government to show them the corruption, so that they can do something about it. You're going to find out the government itself is promoting the corruption. They are the criminals. And this is why all the criminality works so well. is because the government goes along with it. The government's making money off of it. And this is why I think it has been my, my idea and my thought since back in 88 and 89 when I was giving the lectures on this subject of why we have so much criminality. I believe, it's my personal opinion, I believe the United States federal government needs criminality. They need the criminals on the street. They need the violence. They require it. They need it. It's a part of their system to have murderers on the streets they have it's part of their system of of government uh to have rapists and murderers out on the streets that's why you go to prison you learn how to become a really deadly criminal and they put you back out on the street and why would you why do governments need to have criminals on the streets it's because criminals keep the they keep the people frightened they keep the country frightened, mm. and the, and they keep showing you television shows on television, uh, documentaries on History Channel and all the Discovery Channel. They show you what it's like in prisons. They show you what it's like to be in a gangs, and what the gangs, how the gangs live in prisons, and the horrible raping and killing and 
all the violence that goes on in prisons and mafia movies, underworld movies, all the incredible crime that the human humans are capable of. They are telling you, here's what you're going to get if you don't go along with us. We will, if you don't do what we tell you to do, we will find you guilty of something and don't worry about it. We've got plenty of lawyers and we'll find you guilty of something and we will throw you into prison and God help you when you go into prison. Because mm. if you're just a regular, ordinary, per- working class person on the outside, you have no idea in the world what is waiting for you in a federal and state prison. <clears throat> so that's why we need the criminality. We need people to be frightened, and then we need them to be frightened in their homes. So that keeps them quiet. That keeps them docile. And uh, and so when when we have criminals that come out and blow, you know, come into a restaurant and kill fourteen people, they get a twenty five dollar fine, and they get to you know, go to court, and you never hear about them again. And then they're uh, they're out on the street. The next time, and when you get somebody who's killed 10 people, you find out, well, yeah, but he was arrested 20 years ago for killing 15 people back then. Mm -hmm. And here he is killing 10 more today. Well, where's he going? Yeah, he's probably just going to get a fine or a ticket and uh, pay a couple hundred dollar fine and or get, uh, you know, two weeks in, in a county jail. And then he's out on the street again. But you, if you don't pay your taxes or if you don't do something you're supposed to do, you'll go to prison, and God help you when you do. It's a dirty, filthy operation. This is why lawyers are referred to as criminal lawyers, Mm. the American Criminal Lawyer Association, criminal lawyers. It's called the American Criminal Justice System. I've often wondered about that. Why do they call the, uh, the justice system in America, a criminal justice system. Mm-hmm. You think about that. American criminal justice? Yes, because the justice is administered by the criminals. And that's why there's so much, uh, so much, uh, you know, pay pe- paying people off, bribery, right. corruption, sexual bribery, all kinds of blackmailing going on in governments and in, in courts. Why do you play, uh, how do you play tennis on a court? You know, you play tennis on a court, you play basketball on a court. It's a game. It's called the game of life. Right. You have to know how to play this game, and you have to know what this game is really all about. It's about the control of you. Well, you know, George... why is it important to control you? Because you have been brought up to believe that you are free, and you need to get your, you need to, ex, you know, understand in this country you are not free. You are living under a totalitarian fascist dictatorship in this country of America. You are not free. Mm. So when you hear people talk about the land of the free and the home of the brave, you ain't free or brave. 